When legendary chef Julia Child began her TV show in the 60s, she did something no TV chef had done before. She insisted that producers show her mistakes, including the time she dropped a whole chicken on the floor, picked it up and dusted it off, then said, it's okay, no one's looking. Child reasoned that the inexperienced cooks watching her were the ones most likely to make mistakes, so they should learn what to do when those mistakes happen. You know dust off that chicken and move on. After all, no one was watching. As we'll see, not everyone shares Child's desire to reveal their faults. But first, I'd like to share with you one of my favorite recipes. Yo, Pizza Palladium? I'd like to order some for delivery. Yeah, it's me, the usual. Hot and ready every time. And if I hurry, maybe I can eat the entire thing before class. Pretty good. But they burn the pepperoni a little. Oh well, nothing's perfect. And of course, that includes the theories you've been studying. Just like with Julia Child's show, there is more good than bad in these theories. Otherwise, we wouldn't use them today, but they aren't foolproof. Researching your theory, principle, or concept requires you to evaluate its strengths and weaknesses. And during your review of literature, you've no doubt uncovered articles that discussed perceived strengths and weaknesses of your topic. But it's important for me to hear what you think. So tell me your opinion and provide the evidence that supports your belief. Having completed your career assessment, you now have a good idea of how your coursework relates to your career path. With that in mind, look at the subject of your final paper and see what role your theory plays in educating students about a particular discipline and how your theory has practical application in the real world. Things you might consider strengths include an ability to predict, a foundation for future research, and an explanation of phenomena, be it human behavior, weather forecasts, or business cycles. Does your theory help us understand the world in some measure? Some ideas serve as springboards for bigger ideas. Perhaps your theory has propelled important research in the field. There are plenty of occurrences in nature, society, and the universe that we just don't understand until someone offers a reasonable explanation, like black holes. Still, theories can have flaws. Certain things are enemies of the theory, such as time, new research, and weak foundation. New technology changes our understanding of how nature and the animal kingdom work. MRIs gave us a whole new way to examine everything from diseases, to crime evidence, to archaeological finds. What's more, cultural changes lead to changes in the way people act and react. For instance, much early research on how the genders communicate was done when women stayed home and took care of the house, adopting a more subservient role. Today, women have entered all levels of the workplace, including CEO. Yet the old research is still quoted in textbooks. Did you know George III of England was crazy? Well, that's what everyone thought for centuries. Until someone went back and looked at his doctor's notes and came up with a diagnosis. Porphyria, a condition that causes hallucinations and paranoia, along with a lot of other nasty symptoms, including turning your urine purple. That's your useless trivia for the day. The point is that a fresh set of eyes or new information can lead to understandings that weren't possible when some theories were formulated. Who shot JFK? The official story is that Lee Harvey Oswald did it, but some would argue that theory doesn't hold up. No matter which theory of the crime you believe, there are a lot of questions that are likely to remain unanswered. Does the theory you've studied leave you asking questions? Sometimes that question may simply be, huh? Remember, a good theory is simple and accessible. 
Look at your theory with a critical eye for good and bad. This is your chance to put those analytical skills to work. But here's one theory that is foolproof. Cold pizza, it's good for breakfast. You nailed the Yay! flamingo in the head. <laughs> <laughs>